Hello everyone, I'm Atollo Taghi Puranwari. I was involved in this project as a PhD student. I'm currently a PhD student at Purdue University, working under supervision of Dr. Varma. I will present the modules uh, 1, 2, 3, uh, which are about the conducted experimental and uh, numerical studies in this project on the performance of composite play shear walls and uh, concrete field tube columns under fire loading. In this module, the fire testing of five composite play shear wall specimens tested in the Bowen Laboratory will be presented. This module covers the test matrix, specimen preparation, use test setup, and the observations from the fire tests. The properties of all tested specimens, which are named as CW1 to CW5, are shown in this table. Specimens included steel tie bars and headed shear studs. The specimens had, uh, sa had the same cross-section dimension of uh, 36 uh, inch height and 9 inch uh, thickness with uh, 3 sixteenths of an inch uh, thick face plates. Load ratio, place cylinderness ratio, uh, and uh, using shear studs between tie bars, and also the fire uh, scenario are the varying parameters in the specimens. Uh, specimen CW1 had the tie, uh, tie bars at the 9 inch spacing, and headed shear studs were welded between them to evaluate the performance of the shear studs uh, in restraining the. Uh, faceplate under file loading. All uh, uh, specimens other than CW2 were heated uniformly. The thermal insulation capacity of uh, composite play shear walls was uh, studied by heating uh, three sides of the uh, second specimen. In uh, CW3, the tie bars were spaced at 9 inch, which uh, result uh, results in a place cylinderness ratio of 48. To understand the effect of the plate cylinderness ratio on the walls at elevated temperatures, and uh, CW3 and 5 uh, both were uh, tested under an axial load equal to the 28% of the compressive axial capacity of the uh, concrete in field. The observations from the uniform fire tests showed that the tested scale composite play shear walls had a fire resistance rating of more than 2 hours. A local buckling was restrained by the tie bars and shear studs. Uh, these shear connectors could limit the extent of the uh, local buckling. No rupture was observed in the tie bars, but some of the shear studs had undergone well the failure where local buckling had occurred in the face plates. The other important observation was that evaporation of exist the existing water in the concrete in field at elevated temperatures can build up pressure behind the face plate. So to uh, relieve the pressure, there is need to design the vent hole size and spacing. One specimen was heated at three sides for about 140 minutes, and it didn't fail based on the thermal insulation failure criteria. This specimen was bent globally toward the exposed surface, and the local buckling between the tie bars was observed on the exposed surface. To prepare the specimens for fire tests, the top and bottom of the specimens were embedded in reinforced concrete. The thermal load was applied to the specimens while the, ax the applied axial load was kept constant. The length of the he heated region of the specimen was 6 feet. As shown in the, f in the figures on the right, four uh, uh, rows of Headed shear studs were welded to the webs and flanges of the specimens at both ends, and there were, and the, uh, they were covered 
by reinforced concrete. A test setup was designed to conduct the fire tests. The test setup included a self-reacting frame with two reaction steel blocks at the end to support the applied axial load, two tension rods and a hydraulic jack. The test setup was supported by four concrete blocks which were located at the ends of the test setup and they were tied to the strong floor using threaded steel round bars. Two guide frames were provided near the hydraulic jack to limit the movement of the loading beam to the axial direction of the specimens. Two steel uh, beams with uh, half cylindrical bearings were provided at both ends of the specimen to distribute the load. The, the specimen was located between the distributing beams. The half cylindrical bearings allow rotation in the specimen about the weak axis of the specimen. And then next, the specimen was covered with ceramic fiber heaters. Uh, this uh, picture shows uh, the layout of the heaters. And uh, in this picture, the test setup after placing the heaters around the specimen is shown. And here is the test setup before uh, the te test. As an example, the measured surface temperature of uh, the first specimen is uh, shown here. Due to higher covered region uh, area for the heaters on the web, the surface temperatures on the uh, web of the specimen was slightly less than the surface temperatures at the top and bottom flanges. Uh, so the heaters uh, target surface temperature were controlled to heat the specimen uniformly. The temperature zero, the thickness of the specimen, increased uh, symmetrically. The concrete surface uh, in, uh, temperature uh, increased much uh, faster than the mid thickness of the specimen uh, due to the low thermal conductivity of the uh, concrete. At about uh, 30 minutes, the temperature uh, in the middle of the specimen was about 29 Celsius when uh, the concrete surface temperature had reached uh, about uh, 340 Celsius. Also, at the end of the fire test, the temperature in the middle of the specimen was about uh, 350 Celsius when the surface temperature uh, had reached uh, 780 Celsius. The axial displacement of the specimens heated uniformly are compared against the average surface temperature in this figure. CW1 had a steel plus slenderness uh, ratio equal to 24 and CW3 had a steel plus slenderness of uh, 48. So uh, CW1 experienced higher thermal exp expansion than uh, the third specimen. Comparing the response of uh, these two specimens shows that the limiting the steel plate slenderness can improve the uh, valve's uh, axial capacity at early stages of the fire exposure by delaying the local buckling occurrence in the face plate. CW1 and the CW5 had the same steel plate slenderness ratio, but they, uh, they had uh, different road ratios. Comparing the axial displacements of these specimens show that shows that Increasing the load ratio results in a lower thermal expansion during a, a fire event. These pictures uh, show the first specimen after the fire test. A local buckling was observed between the uh, tie bars and shear studs on the webs and the flanges. And a local, but the local bucklings were uh, restrained by uh, shear studs and tie bars, and no weld cracking or tie bar rupture was observed. The faceplate was removed from the specimen uh, one to 
check the condition of the shear studs and the tie bars and also the concrete in fill after the fire test. As shown here in these figures, a few of the shear studs had undergone weld failure at the location of the local buckling of the face plate. Also, we tried to core the concrete in fill in the first specimen to test the strength of the concrete. However, it wasn't possible to take a core as it's shown in the in this uh, in these figures, and the concrete was degraded and the aggregates were separated at most parts of the wall. The condition of the third specimen after uh, the fire test is shown in these uh, figures. Tie bars were uh, spaced at nine inch in uh, the third specimen. Similar uh, to uh, the other specimens, local buckling had occurred between the tie bars. However, uh, the extent of the buckling in the face plate was uh, larger than the first specimen. The uh, figures on the right side are, are uh, showing the comparison of the extent of the local buckling uh, with the first specimen, which had the tie bars uh, spaced at uh, four and a half inch. Three sides of the second specimen were heated, including a web and the top and bottom flanges. No local buckling was observed on the uh, unexposed surface of the specimen, but the local buckling on the exposed surface of the specimen had occurred, as uh, shown in the next slide. Local buckling uh, on the uh, exposed surface of the specimen had occurred between the tie bars at different locations, and uh, these uh, figures are showing uh, the local buckling on the second specimen after the after the fire test. According to the ISO A34 thermal uh, failure criteria, a valve would be considered failed if the average temperature increase on the unexposed surface of the wall exceeds 140 Celsius, or the temperature rise at any point on the unexposed surface exceeds 180 Celsius. The measured surface temperatures on the unexposed surface uh, are shown here in this figure, where the temperatures stayed below uh, the specified uh, limit after 140 minutes of heating. 